All right, picture this. You've put your crypto into a liquidity pool, hoping for some really juicy rewards from those trading fees. But then you check your portfolio and wait a second. Why does it look like you're losing money even though the market has been stable? That, my friend, is impermanent loss. It's one of the trickiest and most misunderstood concepts in the world of decentralized finance, also known as DeFi. And if you're not careful, it could eat into your profits big time. If you're staking, farming, or providing liquidity on decentralized exchanges, you need to know what impermanent loss is, and more importantly, how to avoid it. Stick around because we're about to break down this DeFi dilemma in a way that makes sense. Here's the problem. Decentralized finance world is booming right now and liquidity pools are a big part of that. Everyone's looking to earn a passive income by providing liquidity. But what most people don't realize is that there's a hidden risk called impermanent loss. Imagine thinking that you're making money only to find out that your gains are being erased away by market fluctuations you didn't even see coming. If you're involved in DeFi or thinking about jumping in, understanding permanent loss isn't just a nice to have, it's essential. Without knowing how it works, you could end up with less money than you started with, even if the market moves in your favor. So let's dive in and see what impermanent loss is, how it happens, and more importantly, how to protect yourself. Let's go. So what exactly is impermanent loss? In simple terms, impermanent loss happens when the price of the assets you've deposited into the liquidity pool changes compared to when you deposited them. This price change can lead to a situation where you have less value in the liquidity pool than if you simply held onto your assets without providing liquidity. Let's first quickly recap how liquidity pools work. A liquidity pool is a collection of funds locked in a smart contract. It's used to facilitate trading on decentralized exchanges, also known as DEXs, like Uniswap and SushiSwap. Liquidity providers, also known as LPs, deposit equal values of two assets into a pool. For example, you might deposit ETH and USDT into a pool. And in return, you will earn a share of the trading fees generated when others trade these assets. Price changes and the balancing act. Now, here's where impermanent loss comes into play. Liquidity pools use an algorithm to maintain a constant balance between the two assets in the pool. This balance is based on the ratio of the assets' prices. If the price of one asset increases or decreases relative to the other, the pool will automatically rebalance itself to maintain the ratio. This rebalancing means you could end up holding more of the less valuable asset and less of the more valuable asset. The loss isn't permanent, but it can hurt. The term impermanent loss might make it sound like it's no big deal, like the loss is temporary. And in a way, that's true. If the price of the assets return to their original ratio, the impermanent loss will disappear. However, if you withdraw your funds before the price returns to their original state, that loss becomes permanent. And here's the kicker. Even if the price does bounce back, you might still have been better off just holding the asset separately instead of providing liquidity. So let me give you an example. Imagine you provided liquidity to a liquidity pool with ETH and USDT. Let's say you start with one ETH and one ETH at the time that you're putting it in the pool is worth $2,000 for this example, and you had $2,000 USDT. So the total is $4,000. Now, the price of ETH goes up to $3,000. The pool needs to adjust to this new ratio because of the way the liquidity pools work. You'll end up with less than one ETH and more than 2,000 USDT. Now, after the price has changed, the total value of your holdings in the pool might say 5,500. That's still profit, right? But here's the catch. If you had simply held on to your one ETH and the 2,000 USDT without providing liquidity, your total value would be $6,000 instead of the $500 difference in your impermanent loss. So even though you've made money, 
you've made less than if you had just held the assets. So here are the factors that influence impermanent loss. Volatility of assets. The more volatile the asset in the pool, the greater the risk of impermanent loss. If one asset's price skyrockets or crashes compared to the other, the pool has to make large adjustments, increasing the potential for loss. And then there's time spent in the pool. The longer your assets stay in the pool, the more time there is for the price fluctuations to occur. However, this also gives more time for the prices to return to their original ratio, potentially reducing the impermanent loss. Liquidity pool compensation. The compensation of a liquidity pool itself can also impact impermanent loss. Pools with assets that tend to move in sync, like stablecoin pairs, generally experience lower impermanent loss compared to pools with higher volatility asset pairs. And finally, fee earning. The fees you earn from providing liquidity can offset impermanent loss. In some cases, these fees might exceed the loss, leaving you with a net profit, but that isn't guaranteed, and it depends on the trading volume in that pool and the fee structures. So the important stuff, how to protect yourself from impermanent loss, and here's some strategies to consider. First of all, choose less volatile pairs, providing liquidity for pairs with, uh, you know, that are less volatile, like stable coins. An example would be USDT uh, in a pool with USDC. This can help minimize uh, impermanent loss. These pairs tend to stay close in value, uh, so the risk of large price swings are very, very low. Stay informed about market conditions. Keep an eye on the market trends uh, so you can anticipate potential price swings. Again, very, very important. Use impermanent loss calculators. There are online tools that can help you estimate potential impermanent loss based on the different price scenarios. Use these tools to give you a better understanding of what to expect and help you make more informed decisions. You can also diversify across multiple pools, spreading your assets across different pools, especially those with lower volatility, like stable coins. And finally, consider protocols that offset losses. Some DeFi protocols offer mechanisms that offset impermanent loss, such as distributing additional rewards or utilizing complex algorithms to minimize losses. Researching these and choosing the right platform is a real benefit. So is impermanent loss worth the risk? It really depends on your strategy and risk tolerance. For some, the rewards from trading fees and additional uh, incentives like yield farming can outweigh the risks of impermanent loss. But for others, especially those dealing with highly volatile assets, the risk might just be too high. It's critical to weigh the potential rewards against the risks and only provide liquidity if you truly understand what it is that you're getting into. I hope you enjoyed today's video if you did hit the like button if you have any questions about impermanent loss leave a comment and don't forget to check out this video on DeFi. educate yourself on DeFi. make sure that you know exactly what it is that you're doing and the benefits of investing in that sector thanks for watching take care and i'll catch you in the next one